Street, um, not far from the uh, uh, Jerusalem Hilton. Um, I suppose about, uh, what would you say, a mile or so from the old city? Yeah, just about a mile west of the old city, I think, from the Jaffa Gate in the old city. Very much. Uh, 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 you can hear it now. Peter, we are Peter, we are hearing explosions now in Tel Aviv. This is a camera on the roof of the ABC News Bureau in Tel Aviv, which is looking down at the Central Market. It is about 2.30 in the morning. Let's listen to what we can hear. These are the worst fears realized, of course, of Israelis and Americans. Saddam Hussein had said from the outset, that he was going to try to engage the Israelis if the war came. And of course, now that the war is in its 24th hour, perhaps people were beginning to relax. They'd expected him to counterattack or attack against the Israelis early on. Very much a worst case scenario for Israel and for the Middle East in general. The Israelis have said, Peter, every... go ahead, Dean. Peter, can you hear me? I can. Go ahead. I uh, would point out that this would, uh, if this is really uh, what we think it is, that it will prompt uh, virtually a certain Israeli retaliation and the potential now for a wider conflict, I uh, dare say, is there. Dean, we can hear sort of bangs, explosions in the background. Can you give us any sense of what those are? I can't, Peter. I really don't. Uh, I don't think it's fair to speculate. Um, we we can hear them too. Um, the missile attack. The radio confirms. Radio confirms, Peter, that it was a missile attack. Well, there is a missile attack. Or actually, uh, the uh, the way they're putting it is there is a missile attack. And there's sort of a crack every few seconds. Is that actually what sounds to you like a new explosion every few seconds? Um, I, ca I can't really say, Peter. It's, a, it's difficult to hear, let alone uh, to report. It actually may also be your sharp breathing in your gas mask, which is fully understandable. Let's listen carefully again. I think that's what you were hearing. We are doing our best through uh, every uh, possible source at the moment to confirm exactly what has happened in Tel Aviv. Um, but it is Israel's largest city. It is on the Mediterranean coast. It is the entry uh, to Israel um, from all parts of the world, though the international airport is between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, Ben Gurion Airport. I cannot help but think at the moment, I don't know why, it's a totally abstract thought that the contrast here, mentioning that airport, is when Anwar Sadat, the Egypt, late Egyptian leader, went to Israel. Now we hear the sirens again, Dean. Are those in Jerusalem or Tel Aviv again, Dean? It's uh, Tel Aviv again. We're picking up the audio from Tel Aviv. He can hear it. No, he can't. No, there's not an all clear. The all clear is steady. Well, there's an it advisory is not an all clear. Dean, the radio is giving instructions exactly how to put on the mask, how to feel the room. Uh, Peter, the radio is mm -hmm. continuing to instruct people in civil defense uh, methods how to don your gas mask, what to do in the case of an attack. I cannot tell you how in the middle of the night this comes as an enormous shock to people after a day in which uh, the Pentagon and the White House and the political establishment here has spoken 
of the success of the opening phases of the campaign. We've all been cautioned against euphoria, um, and yet it has been inevitable in both the political and the military establishment as we picked up bits and pieces throughout the day, and therefore it is inevitable in the press to some extent that people uh, will not have relaxed a little bit. This is Mickey Gerdes. Okay, I have someone in, the, in Tel Aviv on the phone now named Mickey. Mickey, can you hear me? Nikki, I think you may be near a radio. If you're near a radio, could you turn your radio down for just a second while you speak to us? Okay, can you talk to us and tell us what you think you know is going on? So the radio has told you to go into a closed room and put on your gas mask, which you clearly have done because you sound like you're talking through a gas mask. Where are you in Tel Aviv and do you know of any explosions? We are now in the central of Tel Aviv. And now the explosion I see, I know, I cannot see. You're in the north. You're on the north side of Tel Aviv. We are in the center of Tel Aviv. In the center of Tel Aviv. Yes, we are the newspapers in the Israel. We need to close now because we need to go to the first room. Okay, thank you very much, Mickey, for taking this time. Please go to the closed room. Um, someone identified as Mickey, or perhaps it is Nikki in Tel Aviv, saying they're in the center of Tel Aviv, listening as clearly all Israelis are at the moment, uh, to the radio as they get a variety of instructions from the government on what to do. John McCreffy in Washington, you can confirm this. Maybe we don't need confirmation, but can you add any details? Uh, I can't add details, Peter, but I can tell you that the U.S. government is confirming that there has been a missile attack on Tel Aviv. Uh, of course, the implications of that, as Dean Reynolds has already pointed out, are enormous. The implications, as Dean Reynolds talk about, come from the Israelis having said repeatedly in the last days and weeks that if there is an attack on Israel, the Israelis will respond a hundredfold. Uh, they said it as recently as last weekend. You may recall that the Bush administration sent a very senior State Department official, Lawrence Eagleburger, over to Israel uh, before the beginning of Operation Desert Storm to ask the Israelis to hold back if they were attacked. He got pretty much the cold shoulder. Uh, General Trainer, this raises, aside from the political implications which this raises at the moment, widening the war in the Middle East, this raises some instant military problems in that if the Israelis wanted to attack the Iraqis, now the skies over Iraq and Kuwait are full of American aircraft. That's correct. Uh, we don't know if there's been any uh, arrangement made on airspace management between the uh, Israelis and the U.S. At least there's been none made, made publicly. Uh, so there is the possibility of, uh, of, of a confusion if the Israelis elect to attack. But I, I have to say that uh, I'm sure that this eventuality was part of the contingency thinking of the, um, of the American Air Control Authorities, and I think perhaps this is a manageable task. After all, we do have the AWACS operating there and very sophisticated uh, command and control systems governing uh, use of the airspace. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily uh, disastrous in terms of managing the air battle, but it is, it is potentially dangerous.